Hello everyone and welcome to the second lecture in the series Miscellaneous Python. In this lecture, I will be telling you about type hinting and how you can indicate the type of variable or a value and how it might be useful. So first of all, let us talk about what exactly is type hinting. Type hinting is a formal solution and this comes in very handy when you're working in large teams or as part of an organization. What this enables you to do is indicate the type of a variable or a value within your Python code. And this, this will help anyone that might be reading or using your code to be able to supply the correct type of value or the correct value to the variable or what it expected. An important thing to note here is that this was only introduced in Python 3.5 and thus it can only be used in Python 3.5 or later. We will be using a Python 3.8 exam, three, Python 3.8 version here in this lecture. And I request you to watch the previous lecture where, where you saw that I created the virtual environment, which had Python 3.8. Now let's move on. Now we will talk about a simple example here. As you can see, we have a simple function greet, and that takes only one argument name. But as you probably might be seeing, the function definition is a bit strange. Instead of just supplying the name of the argument inside the parenthesis, we are supplying the name of the argument, which here is name, and then colon space the type of the argument, str, which means that this function expects a string as an input. And this, after the name, after the declaration of the function, space arrow, space str means that it will return a string also and then a colon to end the function definition. Now let us see how this works in practice. So as you can see here, I have started a Python 3.8 session on my system. And let us write the function. So this was hello plus name. Okay, and you will see if I supply my name to this function, you will see that it returns web of. However, if let's say, I supply an integer, which it did not expect to this function, it will return a type error as it expected a string, but got an integer. Okay, and that is why if you have str or string in your function definition, this will indicate to anyone using your code later on that this function expects a string. So please supply a string and not an integer or a float. Okay, but the example we talked about was a very simple example, just one argument and one line. Now let's talk about a slightly complex function, the headline function that takes in two arguments, text that it expects to be a string and align that it expects to be a Boolean value, true or false with the default value of true. And lastly, it is also returning a string. Okay. So let us, if align, then you return this statement oops sorry or else if you did not supply the align argument or if it is false then you do something else okay and now let us call this function let us call this with this value. Oops, sorry. So as you can see, I called this function with a string where a string was expected and a different value for align and this returned me 
the string python type checking with some dashes and this was because of this else condition sorry of this align condition if align return text dot title new line character then dashes multiplied with the length of the text string which here was python type checking okay we have another example where we are center aligning it okay and this also returned a similar value okay so in this way you can see sorry in this way you can see how the type hinting was useful okay and now type hinting it also goes in with the pep8 style which is the most recent style guideline that came for python and that is it uses normal rules for colons that is there shouldn't be a space before the colon but a space after the colon so as you saw in this previous example text colon space str next you use spaces around the equal to sign when combining an argument annotation with a default value so similarly in the previous example you saw bool equal to true had spaces on either side and lastly you also use spaces around the arrow sign which you saw here we were doing okay so thank you for attending this lecture and i hope you use type hinting in your projects because this will enable easier collaboration and people will be able to use and understand your code better okay thank you and i hope to see you in the next lectures bye